bodybuilding, bodybuilding is not only fucked up guys on steroids, there's another way. There's another way and they wow. Hvis man bruger mange år, så er man nok fuldstændig ligegyldig glad med, men hvis man skal stå halv nøglen eller hele nøglen herinde, så kan det godt være, eller hvad det kan være, så det, det er jo fuldstændig op til jer selv selvfølgelig. Det her det er, den sidste, det er den sidste destination, inden de står på scenen den 14. juni. Og det er en kulmination af mange, mange måneders diæt og, og, og rigtig mange års træning. Og det vil jeg gerne være med til at hjælpe eller give de her atleter den mulighed for at få taget nogle fotoshoot, nogle profotoshoot i forskellige locations, forskellige lyssætninger. Det ligner en million. Altså, udtryk det, eller se det i din øje. Du, du ser helt fantastisk. Det er helt vildt. Få en kig op og skære op. Jeg har jo tænkt på den her, men jeg tænkte, at det er nok bedre ind i det der rum. Der, altså. Men jo, det er særligt godt derude. Jeg ved heller ikke, hvad den koster, den her vej. Prøv at tage den anden vej også, hvor du går væk fra kameraet. Så. Det er ingen, der er ingen, der ved, om de her atleter kommer i den her form nogensinde i resten af deres liv mere. Så det er guld værd at have de billeder her. Så derfor tænker jeg, at vi skal have en god dag her sammen. Lave noget fotoshoot, gå og hygge os. Sådan der. Det er meget, meget, meget. Ja, så har du sådan en vision, du har derude i hånden. Jeg vil sige, at det har været en kæmpe stor rejse. Det har både været øh, ekstremt øh, sjovt, og så har det også været lidt hårdt. Øhm, og det kræver virkelig, at, øh, at man har ryggraden til det her. Så jeg har virkelig kæmpet, og øh, har sagt til mig selv rigtig mange gange, Mina, du kan godt. Selvom det har været ekstremt hårdt, hvor jeg bare havde lyst til at kaste øh, håndklædet i ringen og sige, jamen det der, det gider jeg bare ikke. Nu tager jeg hjem og siger til, til manden, at øh, du kan rende og hoppe, fordi det er fandme hårdt. Men jeg blev ved og blev ved. Så og nu er jeg nået til, til det punkt, at det er på lørdag, jeg skal stille op. Øh, jeg synes, der var ikke rigtig nogen øh, i min by, som der vidste noget om, hvad det var, eller hvorfor jeg, det var det, jeg gerne ville. Øh, men det var jeg ret besluttet om efter 2010. Så jeg stillede op i 2011 til DM. Jeg har været på diæt i, i 10 uger i år. I 2012, da jeg kom rød sidst, der var det 12 uger. Og første gang jeg kom rød, der var det faktisk i 15 uger. Men jeg fandt ud af, at, at så lang tid havde jeg slet ikke behov for at være på, på de fordi jeg var simpelthen tændeklar allerede efter en, en 6-7 uger, fordi at jeg har en høj forbrænding fra naturens side. Og og jeg er egentlig rimelig skræbt til, at når jeg starter en diæt, jamen, så ved jeg, at, at, at så er det det, jeg gør. Og så, øh, så, så er jeg faktisk ret hård til at, til at blive hurtigt klar, uden at du misser han øh, mig selv alt for meget. Altså, jeg har hørt om atleter, som har skulle lave en, øh, en 3-4 timers øh, cardio en uge op til at leve nærmest øh, grøntsager om morgenen, når det som aften. Og så tager du for meget på musklerne, du tager for meget på, på kroppen, og så vil du ikke have det der pump, så vil du bare se flad og udsultet ud på en scene. Det er trods alt bodybuilding, ikke? så man skal fodre musklerne en uge op til, så de kan suge så meget væske og kulhydrat som muligt. Fordi en muskel er 70% vand, ikke? og så mange af dem, som dræner deres muskler til det sidste hjemme, altså. Du kan måske blive 10% bedre, men jeg tror også på, at man kan blive 20% dårligere. Ikke? Så. Alt det arbejde, man har lagt i det, det bliver bedømt i dag. Fordi tilskuerne, der kommer, og alt det, der bliver optaget på film i dag, dommerne, de ser den fysik, som jeg har i dag. Hvordan jeg ser ud for en uge siden, og hvordan jeg ser ud om en uge, det er der ikke nogen, der ved. You also ask, why are we doing this? Because it is kind of crazy, because it is so extreme. But I think it's quite simple. It's all about uh, the same as everything else we do. We do only something because we get some benefit out of it. You probably heard that many times you talk about uh, when you see an Afro guy 
Oh, they always they are so uh, it's so easy for them. They look they are also full of muscle. Uh, they look so muscular and they look so uh, athletic. And uh, it's because of their for Africa because of their genes. But a lot of it is just because they're black, and that's why we are copying. You know that as a picture maker, it's um, dark you make gets the shadows. So, so when it's black you get shadows. You get you see all the details. You have the people; they are not the same color, you know. And it looks actually when you have to compare people, then it's it looks better when you they are more or less the same color. Have you seen Dexter in the series? Hmm? Yes. Like the kill rooms with all the plastic? Yeah. Like ah! Yeah, that's right. That's just uh, so I don't get uh, any big bills from uh, cleaning up the room because what, when they touch the wall, then they make a spot. When you're on backstage in a competition, uh, then people are walking around naked. And the women are men. And I, I kind of like, not, not because of their naked, but because of we are in here for the same thing, and this is not this is not about sex. It's not about being naked. This is about what we are in here for, and uh, we have to be painted, and we don't have to stain and put everything on to yeah. because uh, everybody has something down there. Um, I met Hitting in Barbados when I competed with him at the uh, Universe for the WMBF. We um, continued to reunite and stay friends and then he asked me to come to Denmark and to be a guest poser for his first time show, the uh, Power Fit, and um, I'm glad I'm here, had a good time so far, and excited to uh, give the crowd a little bit of my Texas um, hospitality. I'm glad I'm here. It's the first time I've ever been here so many Øh, hvad hedder det, øh, nøgne mænd og, øh, og halvnøgne damer, vil jeg sige. Vi starter jo nu der, om eftermiddagen, det er sådan lidt atypisk, at man ligesom kan se, at, øh, at der er så mange, der render rundt i speedos. Øh, alle mulige steder, men, øh, men, men øh, det er jo det her miljø, og jeg har faktisk set ret meget frem til det, så jeg glæder mig. Min forbindelse med bodybuilding er, at øh, hvad hedder det, Henning er min mentor inden for træning, og jeg startede et forløb med ham for øh, snart 8 måneder siden, hvor et, øh, vi startede med noget kost for det første, og noget træning og forskellige ting. Noget kendskabet til vi havde det Henning fra, og, og så er vi samtidig også blevet rigtig gode venner, synes jeg. Så, så det er nok et, langs, et, et langvarigt venskab, men øh, også et hårdt et nok for mit vedkommende. Ikke så meget for ham, fordi han skal bare fortælle mig, hvad jeg skal gøre. Power fitness mænd, power fitness kvinder, bodybuilding mænd. Jeg siger kun navn. Ja, du sagde, mit, du vil lige sige mine damer og herrer. Velkommen ja. til øh, mesterskaberne. Ja, DM. Det er DM. Power fitness. Ja. Men før vi går videre, så vil jeg godt have lov til at byde velkommen til founderen og mand bag det hele, Henne Christensen. Tak for det, Henne. Og de der, de skal ud først. <laughs> og det her, det her er en meget, meget stor dag for mig. Det her, det er en drøm, der går i opfyldelse. Um, you had asked me what's the camaraderie backstage with bodybuilders and what my experiences were. I just know that with some of the INBF, that's where I compete for WMBF shows. It's just there's so many nice people and and the tempers are much. Um, much even whereas some of the other federations you just see a lot of just you know yelling and anger and guys walking around puffed up and dirty looks and so forth um, but that's a part of steroids that's fact when they say roid rage that's fact that's nothing you know I mean there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of that going on so um, that's the unfortunate part of that doing testosterone steroids Mostly people, when they do it, it's because they want something else than they got. And that's normally about self-esteem. If I now get bigger muscles, then I will be a good man, then I'll be happy, then I'll be satisfied, then everything will be easy. But what happens is, it is ha actually, it's the opposite that happens. So, it goes down. And then you also see a lot of suicide in, in that area. And why does it go down? It's because your identity comes out of you. It, it, it'll, it'll be in the shell. Your self-esteem, your identity will be... You get an identity that is built only on your size. And when you're not on the rise, when you're off uh, side, then um, you swing in and your... Uh, this one here, down here, it's not working anymore because you stop taking the testosterone and your body stop producing testosterone 
and then uh, it's not working anymore. Naturally, you can get but so big. You cannot look. You, there's no comparison between a natural physique and a physique that has taken performance enhancing drugs like steroids or growth hormone. But with that weight, there's also all kinds of health risks. So go ahead, do it. <laughs> you know, we'll see who lives the longest at the, in the end. And that's what, to me, being 50 years old, that's what it's all about is longevity. What are you going to look like in 10, 20, or 30 years from now? You know, that's the key. I don't want to, to be some shriveled up because I had to stop all the drugs, because my body is so torn down, because of my liver issues or my heart issues or because of my joints from doing all the performance. I would not want to be like that. I want to be continuing on what I'm doing. I'm still the same competitive weight close to it um, that I was 20 years ago. Um, my condition is still close to what it was 20 years ago. So that's the key is how long can you drag it out and you can drag it out much longer naturally. I kommer så langt i står på scenen som Miles han skrev på et tidspunkt på Facebook if you re reach the stage you already a winner. Og det synes jeg siger rigtig meget. Som sagt, som vi snakkede om før, der er kun én der kommer frem med guldmedaljen i hver klasse. Og vi kan ikke gøre noget ved de andre, det eneste vi kan gøre, det er at gøre det bedste vi nu har med selv. Og det bestemmes af mange ting, det bestemmes af hvor rar vores forældre har været ved at stå i hygien, det DNA vi nogle gange har. Og det bestemmes af hvor lang tid man har trænet og en masse andre små ting. Men vind over jer selv ved at lave det bedste I kan. Og så vil jeg give ord til Jørgen og hans papirer. Once you get on stage or once you get backstage, it's pretty much done. So the best thing you can do is to be a good sportsman, you know, to be a good fellow competitor. And um, there's no more competition except on stage. And then the judges are, you're competing basically against yourself, you know, at that point. You do compete against other competitors, but all the work was done way ahead of time. So, you know, it's best to have good sportsman-like behavior. Let me know when you're ready. What was your first name? Costum. Costum. Okay. We're yeah. ready when you go. Okay, Costum. We're going to do a lie detector test to see if you've taken any banned substances. First two pieces I'll be putting around your body. They're called breathing tubes and pneumo tubes. There's two of them. They go around your midsection. And there's a GSR leaf. Sometimes they're called EDA leaves. They pick up electrochemical changes that occur in your skin tissue. The changes occur in the fingers, behind the ears, and between the toes. Obviously, this is the easiest place to test. We reviewed the questions with you so you know the questions. Myra will ask you the questions. She'll tell you when the test is going to start and when it's going to end. And all you have to do is answer yes or no. Good. Are you attempting to lie to any of the questions I'm about to ask you? No. Do you remember ever lying to get someone into serious trouble? Have you taken anything in the last seven years that would violate the banned substance agreement? No. Okay. Your test is over. Everybody passed the polygraph testers. And for the month up to the competition, Antidote in Denmark, they kept every phone number, every where people were living, where they were training, so they can go and visit them without knowing anything. And they have tested for growth hormones, which normally are saying it can be testing against. It's very, very, as uh, Rona Hansen from Antidote in Denmark, she said, it's very, very complicated to test it for, and it's very expensive. Here I got the, uh, all the tests that has been done before the competition. That's from, and they were all negative, and then I have here 10 tests that was done on the day. Everything here was also negative. You can see the list here. We have all 10 tests, negative, negative, negative. So, as I said from the beginning, I want to show Denmark, I want to show the Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation 
what can be done all natural. And I'll do everything that is in my mind and what I can do to make sure that they are natural, the guys who are standing up there. Natural, most muscular. You know, you have your own deciding factor as far as what you want to, to do with your career. If you're competing in the natural federations, then, you know, why would you want to do something like that? Ladies, once again, please listen very carefully to your instructions as you are now being judged. I'm looking for the best body on that day, which is today. Symmetry, muscularity, what condition you're in, how your physique looks aesthetically. So if your waist is getting wider and your back is getting hunchier or you're, you're being mis misproportioned, then that's not going to help you when you have someone who is smaller, but yet their body is just beautiful. Their symmetry is just beautiful. Their body proportions are just perfect for their height, but they don't have to be big in my eyes, but they have to be beautiful. They have an incredibly beautiful body and they're large, yes, as long as it's natural. Okay, gentlemen, please return to the line. Stay in numerical order. Thank you. Number 31, number nine. Please change places. And how they, they judge them is they want to have the best one in the middle. Number 12, please raise your hand. 42, raise your hand. Change places. And then you're, they put a tree in front and they, the first one who get the first call is the one the head guards think is the best. First call. Center stage, number 29. And then maybe this guy said, you want to see this one compared to that one. And then this guy maybe come back and this one comes up here. To my side of 29, number 37. Jeg havde godt inden, selvom jeg ikke var ret gammel på det her tidspunkt. Jeg var fast besluttet om, det var det, jeg ville. Jeg har aldrig været typen med, med de store armbevægelser. Jeg har aldrig været ham, som har, har talt højt om det. Men, men jeg har altid været meget målrettet og, og gået med den tanke om, at det var det, jeg gerne ville. På trods af, at jeg var en lille splice, da jeg startede med at træne. Så, så det var efter, at jeg havde set en konkurrence i 2010. Og stillet så op året efter og, og blev nummer to. Ikke? Så, så det var, men det var lige det sidste skub at faktisk komme op og se det i virkeligheden, fordi man kan ikke øh, at se det på YouTube, det er bare ikke det samme som at sidde i en sal og, og se en bodybuilding konkurrence, det, det kan simpelthen ikke sammenlignes. Så jeg synes ikke man ved noget som helst om det før, man, øh, man om ikke andet har set det, man har også prøvet at stille op øh, en, to, tre, måske fire gange. Deadlift and the rowing is a part of a brand new competition category called Natural Power Fitness. They have 10 minutes uh, to do the best deadlift and then after they have to uh, do rowing where you have the sprint endurance test. something that not many can do and never will do in their life and so you get some respect and some uh, people think uh, wow that's impressive and, uh, and and that's kind of fuel for for us as uh, yeah for me definitely yeah i believe that everybody we everybody needs that but it's totally different what we, we get it from and what is our talent and what is our passion it can be your uh, have a nice house, or you're good at work, you have a career, or you are. But you have something that other people, that you think you can be proud of. Something that's worth losing your house for. It could be, yeah, 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 it could be, exactly, yeah. 
the competition uh, cost me a lot of money, <laughs> so uh, um, so we had to move to a cheaper apartment, to a small cheaper apartment. So that's why we start packing up. And how does that feel? When you want something, you gotta give it what it it means, and uh, that's then. And I really feel I, I did that. I really gave it everything I got. Okay, gentlemen, I would like to ask all six of the finalists to come please to the front line for the final judging. I feel responsible, definitely, yeah. But maybe more to make an alternative competition, an alternative path for these people who want to compete, who want to show what they can do, who want to, uh, but they want to do it fair and uh, with no drugs. Maybe it would have been easy if I believe in God or some uh, Allah or something. Then I could give him the fault or the reason. But what I did uh, when it's working well, and this worked very well. I'm really proud of what we did. <clears throat> Some of it didn't work well, for example, econom economically, uh, and that's also my own fault. But that's okay. That's how it is. Now it's time to move forward and make it bigger and not about me but about the young people who really believe what we're doing is right.